when we go back to the greatest generation and the silent generation, those were good women. Those were strong women. Those were respectful women. The big mamas and the, and, and the black women that stood behind their men that were civil rights leaders and things of that nature. Those were the ride or die women. But what we have going on today is nowadays we got a bunch of tramps and harlots running around here who have normalized behaving like strippers and ladies of the night. Pink hair and twerking and sticking their tongue out. But they want the respect of the women from the past. They want the respect that Big Mama in the greatest generation got. They want the respect that Big Mama in the silent generation got. They think they deserve that respect even though they're not even a fraction of what those women were. That's what we got going on right now. That's what we got going on right now. And as much as they run around here begging black men for leadership, the moment we open our mouths and tell them that they need to change the way they're operating, they tell us to shut the fuck up. So we do not have no ability to lead them because they refuse to follow. And you cannot make somebody follow you. That doesn't make you a leader, that makes you a dictator. And black men have no desire to be dictators as much as they want to try to pawn that off on us and say that we're trying to operate like white men and all of this goofy shit. Black men don't have no desire to be dictators because black men have spent the majority of their lives being oppressed. They have no desire to be an oppressor. Right? Don't got no desire to be an oppressor. The only thing black men want, if you really want to be honest, and they're never going to tell you this. They're never going to tell you this. The only thing that black men want from black women is love and respect. That's all they want from you. That is all they want from you. Love and respect and to be able to have a normal relationship where they can raise their children properly. That's all they want. But you don't want that as much as you pretend you want that. See, you don't want that. What you really want is to run buck-ass wild and do whatever the fuck you want to do. Now, when I was growing up, you knew who the good black women were. The good black women were the ones who had some innocence to them. They were the ones that were raised in a two-parent household. They were the ones who went to school. They didn't dress inappropriately. They got good grades in school. They were normal. Girl next door types. And for the most part, that was most of the black women. That was most of them. Now, there also was another type. The fast girl. This is the girl that would get caught under the bleachers with a bunch of boys. This was the girl that would snap her fingers and roll her neck. This was the girl that would get to fighting in school when it wasn't common for girls to fight. This was the Shanene type. Remember Shanene from Martin? See, back in the day, there wasn't a lot of those. But what happened with my generation is those are the girls that ended up getting pregnant first. So while the good girls went through high school, graduated high school, and went to college, The ratchet girls got pregnant early. By the time the good girls graduated college 
and was even considering being married, the Ratchet girls had already had two or three children. Now, the good girls, once they got married, they might have one, maybe two kids and would begin to raise them the way they got raised. But by the time they had a kid, the Ratchet Girls kid was an adolescent on her way to having kids. So what we have witnessed in my time frame, in the Gen X time frame, we have watched as the Ratchet Girls have produced more children than the Good Girls. And what has happened to our culture is we have been outnumbered. by ratchet women and sorry men. If you look at any culture in the world where they have a patriarchal system, and when I say patriarchal system, I mean a patriarchal system to the degree where the men are abusing their power. Anytime you have that going on, you end up with docile, scared, timid women. And if you think I'm lying, look at Asia, look at the Middle East. Anytime you have a society where the men are super toxic and highly abusive, right? You can see the effect of that in the women. The women will try to escape that culture, but while they are in that culture, you do not see certain type of behaviors. Okay? To think that in the black community, black men are abusive or toxic or have some sort of patriarchal power over black women is illogical. And the reason why it's illogical is because if the men were that way, the women would not be as violent. The women would not be as dominant. The women would not be as bold as they are. These are just facts. These are just facts. Any society where the men operate in that, and I'm not saying the men should be doing that, but any society where the men operate at that toxic level, the women are scared of their men. Black women are not scared of black men. And the reason why black women are not scared of black men is because we have never had that type of culture. Ever. In black culture, women have traditionally been the disciplinarians. Black women were the ones that spanked the kids. The only time the father stepped in is when the kids got out of hand. So the way it always worked is the mothers would discipline the kids, right? And if the kids got too out of hand, they would go to the last resort, which is, I'm going to tell your father. But I guarantee you, if you ask any black man that is a Gen Xer or older, they will tell you they got more discipline from their mothers and the women in their family than the men. For one, the black father wasn't there enough. The black father was working his ass off. This is the main reason why black fathers back in the day usually died before their wives, which is how you ended up with the big mama. Okay? This is also why many of us can remember having homeboys that would go out into the street they would be bullies, they would be thugs, 
They would be criminals. They would be all types of things, but they were terrified of their mama. Nature said it in a song. He said, tattoo a dead man's name on my arm. It was a thug to the street, but still afraid of his mom. In our community, mothers, black women, have always been held in a high regard. So when these women get up here and say that black men are disrespectful, that black men don't protect them, that black men do this and black men do that, they are fucking lying. It is a bold-faced lie. Done for the purposes of creating a smokescreen around the behavior that they are engaged in that has caused so many problems. A dude is not going to fight you if you talk shit about his father. But he will fight you if you talk shit about his mama. In the black culture, when a black man becomes successful, he's not buying a house for his daddy. He's buying a house for his mama. In the black community, you can critique black men all day and twice on Sunday. You can call them raggedy. You can call them trifling. You can call them bums. You can say everything under the sun. Nobody has a problem with it, but you cannot talk badly about black women. That does not strike me as the type of culture that disrespects its women. That does not strike me as the type of culture that disrespects its mothers. See, this is projection. Everything that we've been accused of as black men is really what goes on in other cultures. This is the reason why we're desired by women of other cultures. Because out of all of the men in the world, we, black men, are more understanding, more patient, and we don't try to dominate our women the way other groups of men do. Truth be told, black men, for a very long time, have been taken for granted. Black men, for a very long time, have been blamed for the behaviors of other men. We get blamed for the patriarchy and we never even had a damn patriarchy. Never even had one. Is ever since I was a child, I've watched television shows where the black mama ran the house. Carl Winslow was not the boss of his house. Harriet Winslow was. Philip Banks was not the boss of his house. Vivian Banks was. And see, even while I'm saying this, if there were certain women on a panel with me, they would argue me down. It's not us. They'll say it's y'all or they'll say it's both of us. They have been doing this shit for over 50 fucking years. And we have watched as the community, as black love, as black relationships have continued to slip into the fucking gutter.